officers tonight after a violent 24 hours in parts of Baltimore. 13 people shot, one of them died. The latest shooting happened in North Baltimore just around 2 o'clock this afternoon. An 18-year-old was hurt. 12 of those shootings happened within 12 hours of each other. You're taking a look at just some of those scenes. One shooting last night left three people wounded, including a 14-year-old boy. It happened in a safe street zone hours after city leaders gathered in the same area to tout some success when it comes to gun violence. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost pressed the mayor for answers on that shooting and the overall violence in parts of Baltimore. Our team coverage begins with Keith Daniels and he's at Baltimore City Police Headquarters with a look at the role the officer shortage is playing. Keith. Well, Kai, the city police union president, Sergeant Mike Mancuso, called it a, quote, chaotic day and night for his officers. He said they did a great job, but they are exhausted and overworked. And tonight, a closer look at that violent Tuesday and the police response. The unrelenting gun violence in Baltimore City. One shooting every hour. In all, 12 people shot within 12 hours. A bleak period Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. Shootings reported across the city in the east, west, north, and south, with the police department struggling to keep up, stretching an already short staff. Listen to the dispatchers. Flag the first incident yet. They're all over time. Adam Schiffin is coming clear to guys. Still holding seven calls for three party ones. No one available at this time. Critical words, but emblematic of the department's uniform patrol unit that's nearly 500 officers down. Former Baltimore Deputy Police Commissioner Jason Johnson. Say it is a crisis at this point, but it's been a long time coming. On the current police shortage and how it potentially fuels the city's crime crisis. Well, because the BPD does not have the ability to deliver the resources necessary to reduce crime and to, uh, you know, create a sense of safety, which is fundamentally what police departments do. They don't have adequate staffing to do that. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison says they are getting the job done, but with fewer officers using overtime to, quote, flex the size of the department. Johnson calls overtime critical, but concerning. It's mandatory. It's not optional. This is not an opportunity for officers to increase their income. Many, In many cases, they would prefer to go home and spend time with, with their family, but they're kept in these long, you know, uh, you know, day-long shifts, uh, which can in, in itself be dangerous. In Tuesday's shooting spree, 11 of the victims are expected to survive, but a 28-year-old man was killed in West Baltimore just minutes after a triple shooting injured a 14-year-old boy. Dozens of yellow evidence markers dot the scene where the teen was struck. No word yet of suspects in any of these shootings. Well, according to the city's police union, currently there are about 600 officers assigned to the city's nine patrol districts with only about 10 to 14 officers working per district, per shift on the streets. We're live tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. Fox 45 News continues to dig deeper into the officer shortage. A former Baltimore police officer who served for decades shares why he believes the department is losing more personnel than they can hire. That exclusive interview is tomorrow night, right here on Fox 45 News at 10. And as we mentioned, one of last night's shootings happened in a safe streets zone. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost pressed the mayor on the safe streets program today. Mayor Brandon Scott says he has unwavering support for the Safe Streets program, noting the city continues to fund the Baltimore Police Department, even though we routinely see homicides and shootings pop up all over the city. And the mayor says the same should be true for Safe Streets. It's sunny along Orleans Street now, with only fragments of crime scene tape giving away what happened just the evening before. Orleans Street, 32 rounds. Healthy. Where evidence markers plot out a shooting scene. Three people shot, including a 14-year-old boy. 
Zooming out in the neighborhood, you'll see this shooting scene is in the middle of the McKeldry Park Safe Street Zone. Good morning and thank you all for being here. The same area where just hours before the shooting. Let's talk about Safe Street. Shante Jackson, the director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, along with Mayor Brandon Scott, announcing additional infusions of $5 million to the city's gun violence intervention program, Safe Street. <laughs> Our investigation over the last year and a half into the program, we found few oversight measures in place, lacks accountability and transparency struggles. After threatening to sue the city over public information, the city handing over hundreds of pages of contracts between Baltimore and the community-based organizations operating the 10 different Safe Streets locations, like LifeBridge and Catholic Charities, now the only two CBOs after the mayor restructured the patchwork of management system. In those documents, we found the locations have petty cash stashes, but we don't know how that money is being spent. Good afternoon, everyone. At a community event Wednesday, we pressed the mayor. Why should the city trust you when you say that this new five million dollars investment on top of the funding for safe streets will actually make a difference when on the same day we saw three people shot? Well I think uh, the residents of Baltimore are a little smarter than to think about it in that in that in that sense right? Again touting this Johns Hopkins report showing some decreases in homicides and non-fatal shootings in some of the safe street zones but not everywhere and the city failing to mention Baltimore paid nearly $145,000 for the study in the first place. Then we have to continue to focus on why in the hell people are doing these kind of things to each other over small things. As for the cash at each location, do you know where the petty cash is being spent? And your team ignored our questions about ignore, setting up an We didn't ignore your questions, McKenzie. You and did. I'll say this to the residents again. We know you guys like to play games on TV and make it look like we're escaping you. Safe streets work. The information about safe streets is out there. We're working with partners that like LifeBridge and Catholic Charities, and we work with partners who have impeccable financial records over history. When you think about LifeBridge and, si and Sinai Hospital and all the things they do in Baltimore and everywhere they operate, anyone to say that they are using city funds or even hinting at that in a wrong way is being very disrespectful. We Thank just you. don't know how they're being spent. Will you do an interview with us about it? Thank you. The mayor's car pulling away. The mayor not giving an answer about how the petty cash is being spent, who has the receipts, or an update on that interview request. All while the gun violence continues in Baltimore, like at Orleans and Montford, where Tuesday night's crime scene tape now balled up in the trash. People walk the street, marked by blood, looking to live another day. The city continues to ignore our questions about funding and how that money is being spent within the Safe Streets program. And again, we've asked Shante Jackson for an interview to talk about Safe Streets for months. She's refused to do so, but if she changes her mind, we'll get it scheduled. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And while the number of homicides this year have been down so far, there are concerns that deadly violence will increase during the warmer months that we've seen in past summers. Historically, crime picks up in the spring and the summer. And this month, no exception. April alone accounts for 33% of shootings in 2023 so far. 24 people have been killed. January is the only deadlier month this year. Now, this April is also on pace with the past five years when it comes to homicides. So far, we have seen more murders than April 2020 and 2019, and there are still four days in the month left.